Perhaps the most accomplished player in NBA history, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar won a record six league MVP awards and six NBA titles, owner of one of the game's most unstoppable offensive weapons, the Skyhook. He still stands as the game's all-time leading scorer. Crowd stands for Kareem to get the ball. It's in the Kareem. Kareem swing left. Right hand throw, what a good! The new king of scoring has ascended his throne. Kareem, oh my gosh, number 33. When he burst on the international scene with the fold out cover of Sports Illustrated, I was in high school and I wore number 33 because of Kareem. And he was just the most incredible player that I'd ever seen. He set such a standard of excellence and his relentless search for perfection just established himself as this remarkable beacon, ideal of what a basketball player, what a human being could be. I wanted to play on the same team, in the same program, the same history, the same legacy that Kareem had created and given so much to UCLA. Kareem, he was the greatest player that I've ever played against. The first time playing against Kareem, but the first time he was Lou Alcindor, and he just created just an uh, incredible uh, challenge for me. He was with the Milwaukee Bucks, and and they had the interleague uh, matchup, uh, Mil Milwaukee Bucks against the Kentucky Colonels, and that was my first time, you know, competing against this giant of a player. Kareem and I grew up together. I've known Kareem since I was 14. So, I mean, uh, I've seen the metamorphosis of uh, a basketball player that started out at 14 and ended up being probably the greatest scoring center in the history of the game. I do remember that when Kareem was a freshman, you know, uh, uh, he wasn't as talented as he was his sophomore year. And between that year, I think I remember him going up to Cushers with uh, Wilt. And I think Will had a lot to do with the uh, maturation of uh, Kareem's game. Kareem is a long story. There's a, there's a lot to unpack with, with, with Kareem. You know, I met Kareem when he was Lou Alcindor. I didn't really meet him, but I played against him in high school. One Christmas, we had a tournament. Power Memorial came up from New York to play us in that Christmas tournament. We ended up beating them 78 to 74. Fast forward, going now to the mid early 70s when Kareem uh, became a teammate of mine with the Los Angeles Lakers. I used to remind him all the time about, you know, how, <laughs> how much fun it was that we beat you at, at uh, you know, in Schenectady, New York, and you always, ah, if it wasn't for those officials, you know, we would have busted your chops. And he said, by the way, I came back the next year and we played again, we beat you by 50. I said, yeah, but Kareem, I wasn't there. I was at the University of Kentucky at the time. And so we always had these little, these little conversations that, that, that turned out to be funny uh, about those moments. The first year when I met Lou, I was a sophomore and he was a freshman. This seven foot, one and a half inch giant is largely responsible for the unbelievable records the Bruins have set in the last two seasons. The superstar in the making. We were playing out in uh, UCLA at Poly Pavilion, and uh, we were playing Oregon State, and Kareem, you know, began to holler, hey, give E the ball, give E the ball. We was playing against him, and he was cheering for us. And uh, it was one of those things where I think that after that, when we began to play against one another, then all of a sudden, I think the tension between Russell and Wilt all of those years, it kind of happened with Kareem and I. I think that when we began to play against each other, there was such uh, a challenge and it, it was just every game. I wanted to destroy him, he wanted to destroy me. And it was one of those kind of situations that kind of bloomed and kind of grew to become, you know, a really challenging situation. When I first met Kareem, he was in high school at Power Memorial in New York uh, City. And then I, years later, traded to Milwaukee. You know, Kareem was uh, second year. Uh, he was learning a lot of different things. Uh, he just come out of a UCLA where they won a championship. 
and we went, went with the Bucks this first year, and they got knocked out of the playoffs. So when I got there, I guess we felt we could do a little, uh, do some things that were great for the city of New York and great for the teammates as well. Great guy, big fella. Hey, Luke. Fella. Luke, congratulations. Oscar just paid you a great compliment. You had a great series. Congratulations. Kareem was truly about team, and he was about winning, but didn't speak about it a lot. But you know, you can tell him, Cap, you got it. With anything, you know, Riles would ask him, like, Cap, you got it? You got everything? Yeah. And Cream wasn't the kind of guy that said, come on, you guys. Every now and then he would do it, but he wasn't about, come on, come on, come on. He knew what to do. The Cooper dribbled right down the middle, later Kareem, and Kareem scored. He knew we had to go through him. <laughs> the ball. That was fun playing with Kareem. Well, yes, that's absolutely fun. Zeke, you came into the NBA during the prime of Kareem's career. What did you learn firsthand that maybe you hadn't realized from watching him on TV? I, unfortunately, Matt, I came in during the prime of his <laughs> career. And, you know, when you watch him on television, yeah, you think they're good. But then when you actually get a chance to play against him, not only do you realize how good he is, but how smart he is. And I remember I was a designated double teamer, so we double teamed Kareem every time he touched the basketball. And Magic threw it in. My job was to come back and double team. So I come back and I double team. My hands are up. I'm like, you know. And I remember he looks me dead in my eyes and he goes, hey, is this your man? And he drops it right over my head. Magic lays it up. I mean, he was so smart and, um, you know, just a consummate professional. Every time he walked out on the floor, you knew he was going to try to give you his best performance. And you played against him in huge games over the course of your respective careers in his 30s into his 40s even. What did it mean for you and your teammates and your coaching staff as opponents to game plan against Kareem? Well, everything started with Kareem. Uh, and and it, wasn't, it wasn't the Lakers. It was like, okay, this is how we're going to guard Kareem. And then everything you know, came after that. So we, we would try to double team him. Sometimes we would try to triple team him. But every time he touched the basketball, it was like a double team or fake. But you, didn't, you couldn't give him the same look every time because, again, he was so smart and he read the defense. He was almost like playing against Tom Brady. Can't give him the same look every time because they're just going to pick you apart. And for all of us, you know, during that period of time, you know, Kareem was, ah, you know, every time he walked into the room, it was, it was like music was playing, like, ah, you know. <laughs> um, and, and, and as people know, I, I think he's the greatest player to ever play. You know, he's my GOAT. But, you know, what he was doing outside of the playing field during the time when I was a teenager and the social changes and the impact that he was making in society. And then you walk out on the court and you see number 33 in purple or 33 in gold and you're like, wait a minute, that, that, that's him, that's the dude. But that dude is like hooking you. So game planning against him was extremely difficult. As a physical specimen at seven feet, two inches tall with that sky hook, which requires incredible balance, no one's been able to replicate it since. What kind of an athlete are we talking about? You, you know, I don't, I don't think people realize how great an athlete he was because Seven two, but then he probably had like a 36, 38 inch vertical. I mean, I mean, Matt, when he, a lot of times when he shot his hook shot, like this was the basket, he was shooting it like this, <laughs> you know, just throwing it down. And there was this great picture of him shooting a hook shot over Wilt Chamberlain. And Wilt was like, you know, you know, very athletic himself. But Kareem is like maybe two to three inches over Wilt just shooting it down. And, you know, he was gifted, he was strong. And again, just his, his, his grace, his professionalism, and just how smart and dominant he was. You, you would think, like, after a game, you'd be like, man, we did a good job against Kareem. And then you look at the stat sheet, and it's <laughs> like 26 points, 15 rebounds. Now, the times that I was following him when they were playing against the Celtics, uh, watching him playing against the 76ers and Moses Malone, you know, watching him compete against other great teams because, Matt, we hadn't become a great team yet. Um, but, you know, Boston always was a great team. So watching him having to win in the garden and compete against McHale and Parrish and Bird and just seeing him rise to that, that other level, you know, at an at a, at a age where he wasn't in his prime, 
I think Kareem won the MVP out of the league or the MVP of the series when he was 36 years old. That's how great he was. That's part of the story as well, his longevity. Unbelievable. Yeah. Stop. He's unreal. The way you just say Kareem, you say Skyhook. I mean, which is uh, the most unstoppable shot ever made in basketball. The Skyhook, to this day, nobody's ever replicated a shot. I just think he's simply amazing in how he took a shot and just mastered it, and nobody can duplicate it. And I asked him one time, and I said, Kareem, since we are jazz cats, I mean, the two of us, so I said, what would be that, that patented jump, that hook shot you got, the sky hook? What does it feel like if you were a musician? He said it feels like John Coltrane playing the saxophone. And I said, yeah. <laughs>